Ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. It's a distinct pleasure for me to welcome you all this morning. The fact that we are able to meet in person is indeed a welcome and hopefully positive sign of things to come for this year as we exit a tumultuous period. The annual report we are launching today is our hallmark obligation, which provides an assessment of the country's economic conditions, highlights tropical policy issues, and accounts for the base operations in the prior year. Furthermore, it reflects our own journey as per the statutory requirement. Beyond that, this event provides a moment to reflect on our collective march to the nation and recast the narrative of the promise of tomorrow. I will therefore share a few ideas that home in on why Namibia is next frontier on the African continent and why we stay up while, despite the challenges we have experienced to date. The past three years have been a rude awakening for us all. The COVID-19 pandemic has brought about the loss of more than 4,000 lives in Namibia and imposed a terrible economic and social cost. These factors contributed to Namibia's growth, remaining sluggish despite the rebound in 2021. As we reflect on the year that was, I would like to give a high-level overview of the economic performance during this period. The Namibian economy is estimated to have expanded by about 2.4% in 2021, <clears throat> following a record contraction of 7.9% in 2020. This recovery was aided by support of macroeconomic policies and driven by the mining sector, coupled with positive real value addition in the wholesale and retail trade, hotels and restaurants, and the information and communication sectors. Namibia's headline inflation rose from 2.2% in 2020 to an average of 3.6% during 2021 due to rising international oil prices and global supply disruptions. Nevertheless, inflation was well contained during this period, though it increased towards year end as well as for the first two months of this year. During this period, the Bank of Namibia demonstrated its resilience and continued to deliver on its mandate and instituted various relief measures to cushion households, to cushion businesses from the worst effects of the pandemic. Among these relief measures was the accommodative monetary policy stance with a record low repo rate of 3.75% during 2021, and we did this to support the struggling economy while safeguarding the exchange rate pay arrangement. If we did not intervene with those relief measures, we would have risked tightening financial conditions significantly and made the impact of the pandemic much worse. I'm also glad to share that these relief measures provided by the bank to the banks have been extended until 2023 to keep supporting the economy. These measures were intended, among other things, to ensure financial and monetary stability. Alan Greenspan, the former chairperson of the Fed, has put such a practical definition of financial and monetary stability, and I would like to quote him. Monetary stability is when people's decisions on spending and investments are not influenced by their concerns and expectations about the value of the money they have accumulated. When they are not concerned about the safety and soundness of individual banks who have financial stability, he defies it." Unquote. Ladies and gentlemen, monetary authorities globally aspire to this and the Bank of Namibia is no expect, exception. The banking sector remained profitable, liquid, and resilient despite its trade economic environment. In fulfilling this oversight mandate of ensuring that the financial system remains 
some even say grow. The bank also assesses the non-bank financial institution sector, and that is still sound. The Bank of Namibia sister regulators and financial institutions have all played their part to ensure financial system resilience, stability, and soundness despite a once-in-a-lifetime catastrophic event. It must be noted that the Bank of Namibia cannot fight the pandemic itself. It can, however, help to provide stability in the financial system. Personally, I'm very grateful for how the bank responded in line with the execution of its mandate and the tools at its disposal during this time. I'm also grateful for how the staff contributed and how we cooperated with government and the private sector to help support the restoration of our economy. If you allow me, I'd like you to give an applause to the staff of the bank. Through our strategy, the bank will strive ceaselessly towards a more efficient, responsive, and modernized financial system that is accessible to all ordinary citizens who are linked with regional and international financial institutions. As a result of the rapid innovation in the fintech industry, the bank has recently released the fintech regulatory framework. Furthermore, we are doing groundbreaking research on central bank digital currencies and a consultation paper is nearing completion in order to elicit feedback from interested parties. The bank has also seen the rise of cryptocurrency financing services. We must ensure that these platforms are reliable for lending trading and safe custody for consumer interests well protected. These innovations are bold and there is considerable promise to reduce transaction costs increase competition, and improve financial inclusion, but there are also potential risks to that. We are firm in giving the required direction to the industry, innovators, and interested parties as we dive into these uncharted frontiers and cooperate with stakeholders to advance our ambitions in the fourth industrial revolution. Ladies and gentlemen, let me return to the economy. Despite the headway that we have made in terms of buffering the Namibian economy, we are not out of the woods yet, and Namibia still faces a myriad of challenges. Yes, it's correct, we face inequality. We have got poverty and we have got unemployment as challenges. The COVID-19 pandemic continues to loom internationally, despite a welcome realization of restrictions and a drop in infections on a local level. This both well for the recovery of our tourism sector, which has been devastated by COVID-19, and we hope that it will recover over the next 12 to 18 months. Namibia emerged from a terrible drought that lasted many years. The consequences were disastrous, given that the agricultural industry supports about 70% of the country's population, directly or indirectly. As a result of better rainfall, Farmers can restock and agricultural output can increase, allowing the industry to prosper once again. The most considerable risk to our economy, apart from COVID, is what stops our recovery now is the conflagration in Europe. It has got tremendous geopolitical risk, it has got economic risk, and now Peace is profitable. Any war is costly. Financial markets prefer stability and predictability to function normally. One can only hope for an amicable resolution as soon as possible so that we can focus on the unfinished business of restoring the output and, and jobs wiped out by the pandemic and growing the economy further again. Ladies and gentlemen, the question that we should ask is whether our, our stars are aligning. Can we restore our place in Namibia as one of Southern Africa's fastest growing economies? Is Namibia the next frontier? I make the case that we need to reclaim lost ground and redefine ourselves. We must use every opportunity to speak region and its economic potential. The prospective investment of between Six to nine billion US dollars is absolutely astounding. 
from the ability to revolutionize the structure of our economy and spark downstream businesses. For its abundant, world-class renewable energy resources and increasing demand for green hydrogen worldwide, Namibia is quickly emerging as an early entrant in this new market. In this regard, Namibia's ambitions of becoming the leading exporter of green hydrogen on the African continent and to help the world achieve its quest for net zero or low carbon emissions are what inside. It is innovative and deliberate actions such as these that will bring the much needed reforms to recover, grow our economy, and create employment for our country. And this is intangible, and many people actually don't realize the impact of this. But as leaders, our job is to have that ability to see the music of the future, what's going to play out in two, three years' time, and start dancing and preparing the nation for what's going to play out. Then we have what oil that we've been discovered, and if found to be commercially viable, that could enable Namibia to become the third largest oil producer in sub-Saharan Africa after Nigeria and Angola. Namibia is in a fortunate position as a latecomer to this game in that it does not need to reinvent the wheel when it comes to governance frameworks and beneficiation aspects. There are plenty of examples from which we may learn and how to harness this resource successfully and avoid falling into the same resource trap like some other nations. Other pleasant news for the mining sector in particular is the beers of Death Marine Namibia's procurement of the world's largest diamond mining vessel and the greenest mining recovery vessel ever built in the world. This vessel will greatly enhance diamond production and continue to contribute to our economy. Equally, the decision by Namdeq Holdings to extend the current life of the mine by another 20 years by investing in the onshore mining activity is noteworthy. We also understand that the Kudu gas fields remains on our radar and has the potential to be reorganized to deliver much needed energy to Namibia and neighboring countries in years to come. I purposefully highlight these nascent mega projects to demonstrate that our future is indeed bright. We need to actually recast the narrative that we have got in our country. What is required is a paradigm shift to recognize these possibilities and reposition ourselves accordingly. By maximizing the opportunities above, we will ultimately grow the economy and create wealth for the majority of our people. We will grow the case and ensure equitable access and opportunity. GROW is an acronym we must recall as we embrace these new game changes in our economy and maximize the value while harnessing the endowment for future generations. And if we need to unpack this acronym, the G in GROW stands for green hydrogen. The R in GROW stands for resources. Those are all mineral resources, whether they are diamonds or whether they are any minerals that are rare that we'll discover in our country at some point. The O stands for oil and the W for wealth creation. That's GROW. We need to remember that because these are great changes. These are times for us to come together as a nation and put opinions and emotions aside. I ask you to join Namibia on this transformative journey, grab the possibilities that GROW will provide and optimally contribute to the growth of a prosperous Namibia. As for the Bay of Namibia, we remain totally committed and will continue in our quest to support the economy, particularly these new industries, with the necessary policy research that will maximize the benefits of these resources to the majority of our people. We have got a branch in Oshakati. The Bank of Namibia should explore establishing its presence in the southern part of the country, closer to the action, in order to acquire first-hand information and data on these key economic efforts, while also delivering superior macroeconomic and microeconomic analysis for all stakeholders. Ladies and gentlemen, innovation is the opportunity and not as a threat, as the late Steve Jobs reminds us. I believe that we have a window of opportunity to see these green shoes. 
To achieve this, we must continue to push the boundaries and be inventive, ambitious, and proactive. We are in a fortunate position as Mother Nature has abundantly endowed Namibia with all the natural resources that we need to be self-sufficient and prosperous. Within nature lies the cure of humanity. If you think about everything you hold to value in this planet, whether it's metals, minerals, energy, sun and the wind, these things are in near infinite quantities in Namibia. I want to borrow from Arthur Jung, who says, God sleeps in the minerals, awakens in the plants, works in animals and thinks in men. Now is the time for our vibrant and talented Namibian youth to position themselves for this new future by proactively equipping themselves with the necessary skills. There are several opportunities to further study in green hydrogen technology, especially. As such, it is up to young Namibians to take advantage of these opportunities. Our human development endeavor in both the public and private sectors should align with these bargaining industries on the horizon. So we rely less on foreign skills. We need to own this piece. It's time for us to go to universities, to colleges, to prepare us for what's laying ahead. They are exciting new industries that are coming in our country. Ladies and gentlemen, about to conclude, the Bank of Namibia continues to maintain its commitment to Namibia's people and support our nation's development. As mentioned, the bank diligently ensures that government receives a substantial dividend amount from the bank on an annual basis. In 2021, the bank recorded a higher surplus due to capital gains realized from foreign reserves, assets, and cost containment measures that we have implemented in the bank. Consequently, the bank declared a dividend of 413 million Namibian dollars to government compared to 270 80 million Namibian dollars in 2020. Today, the Bank of Namibia will hand over a dividend payment of 413 million Namibian dollars to the Ministry of Finance, one of our most valuable and critical stakeholders. A portion of this dividend will be allocated to the newly created Sovereign Wealth Fund also known as the Dalvichia Fund, facilitating long-term inclusive and sustainable development in our country. In doing this, the bank is contributing to the achievement of inclusive economic growth and to the reduction of poverty and inequality. Finally, I would like to encourage you to go through our annual report at your own leisure to interrogate its content. As the bank, we will gladly address any questions or comments that you may have thereafter. I would also like to take this opportunity to acknowledge all the parties that contributed to ensuring that the annual report came out in time as per our statutory obligation. And I would like to thank the team that produced our new corporate identity. You have done a great job. Most importantly, thank you to each and every staff member within the Bank of New York. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Before your continued commitment and perseverance, our collective achievement of 2021 would not have been possible. I appreciate all effort, big or small, in making 2021 a most remarkable year of achievement in the history of the Bank of Namibia. Once again, I sincerely thank you for joining us today for listening to me. Thank you.